Hi guys, uh, this morning I just wanted to make a short video about ATX power supply repair and um, I specifically want to talk about a voltage rail, a hidden voltage rail if you like, that's generated by the supply that you might not be aware of, uh, but if this voltage rail isn't present or it's too low then the power supply won't start up and I've repaired a few now that have had problems relating to this voltage rail. Um, so where's this hidden voltage rail yeah, and why is it important? Well let's have a quick look at how the ATX power supply works. Yeah, So you have typically a small transformer driven by a MOSFET yeah, and this generates your 5 volt standby. So on this one it's this transformer. yeah. The 5 volt standby then comes up this purple wire, see the purple wire here, yeah, and goes to your motherboard, and that puts the 5 volt standby. When you press the on switch on the computer, the motherboard sends a signal back on this green wire, which goes to the, the control chip here, and turns this on. And this then generates the main power rails, yeah, one moment. Always a call when you don't need it, yeah, anyway. That's how it basically works, okay? So, the problem I've come across is, is this one, and this is where your hidden voltage comes in. Uh, basically, what's good on here with this power supply, you have your main power coming in, around about 300 volts DC, yeah? So this is coming from the main big electrolytic one or two capacitors. Uh, across here this is positive yeah this is negative this comes from your bridge rectifier sometimes a pfc circuit okay this negative we call hot ground yeah it's ground but it's not earth it's not a safe ground yeah and this is your positive supply so typically the supply will go through a transformer yeah like so and here you will have usually a mosfet yeah quite possibly a small value resistor going down to the hot ground yeah so there okay and this MOSFET this is driven by an oscillator so this is switching on and off rapidly and pulling current through this coil yeah on the other side of the transformer coil you have another winding so this is your primary yeah? and this is your secondary winding okay this then goes to ground this is safety ground on the low voltage side yeah and this through a diode and a capacitor yeah this is your five volt standby okay so that's what you have and this is going to the motherboard yeah but what you have then is this as i call it, the hidden voltage so on this winding almost always you have another connection coming from the winding yeah from the same winding the same transformer and this goes to another diode yeah another capacitor to ground and this is the other voltage yeah what i call the hidden voltage this normally is between about 16 volts and about 24 volts yeah the value will depend on the power supply as to what it is this voltage powers some of the drive circuitry for the main power supply so the, the power the controller chip can be powered from the 5 volt standby it can be powered from this other voltage the 16 to 24 yeah but there'll be circuitry in between here and this little transformer that's driving the main transistors and that will need more voltage this is where you, this supply is used yeah so what you can find and i've seen it quite a few times this power supply is running yeah you've got five volts standby but this voltage is very low yeah and the reason for that you think of all well, the power supply is running why is this one okay and why is this one low and the reason is this capacitor if this capacitor fails, yeah, it goes effectively open circuit, very high ESR, it loses its capacitance, the voltage on here will drop. And I've seen it drop to like 8, eight volts, yeah, or somewhere like that. And when it drops this low, the power supply can't work. So, this is the hidden voltage I'm talking about, yeah. If you've got a power supply that 
it's got 5 volt standby you know you've got 5 volt standby but when you press the power button it won't start this is the thing you should look for next okay now I can give you some clues where to find this yeah firstly the diodes these two diodes on the, two, on the transformer will be quite close to each, close to each other somewhere on the board normally yeah so on this one we can have a zoom in and let's have a look to see where they are yeah so on this power supply you can see the, the transformer the smaller one the standby yeah and here this large diode is your 5 volt standby yeah that that's this one on the circuit diagram yeah and if you're not sure where that is you can use your multimeter and effectively go from the purple wire to the diode on this one it's the end of the diode that's into the circuit board is a bit hard to get to you'd have to take the board out and you can trace the continuity from here to the diode yeah uh, I mean the other way you could just go onto diode test mode and effectively go from the purple wire to here reverse the wires and when you get it the correct way round you get like a, a 0.6 volts you know a reading that you've got a, um, a diode junction I'll show you one moment so as I was saying on this power supply I can't easily get to the bottom end of that diode yeah I could do it if I take the, the circuit board out but if I measure from here the purple wire with the black and the purple because I'm going through the diodes bias the other way yeah to the top of this diode you see it there 0.12127 that is a shot key diode yeah the other way would to go from the purple wire if you could get to the other end of this diode but that's how to prove which diode is your 5 volt standby okay now on this board if we look we'll see close to this is another diode so the other diode is here yeah and this one is generating our hidden voltage rail and next to it is a capacitor that's the capacitor that's connected to this uh, diode again you could tip the circuit board upside down and you could trace it through you had to find out which capacitor uh, but another good way of knowing if it's the right capacitor is the voltage rating of the capacitor normally in a power supply your voltage rating capacitors are like 16 volt capacitors on the 12 volt rails and probably 10 volt capacitors on the other ones yeah but this capacitor will be rated probably at 35 volts yeah if you find one capacitor that's 35 volt and you think well, why does it need to be such a high voltage it's because it's on this voltage rail yeah so this this is a working power supply but we can now put this to the test yeah this information I've given you uh, so what we'll do is we'll measure the 5 volt standby and we'll measure the voltage on this diode yeah and this is our voltage rail the one we're talking about that's of interest okay so I've turned the power supply on I've put the meter here so you can see it yeah uh, this is my uh, analyzer um, I can see on here that I have 5 volt standby you probably can't see it unfortunately uh, which is telling me that the standby is 4.9 so I know I have 5 volt standby this is a good power supply anyway yeah so what we're going to do now is to measure from ground to this other uh, diode uh, I'll pick up ground by just pushing my meter lead into one of these connectors yeah cause that's a good place to find ground and then let's have a look on the other end of this uh, diode down here we can see what we have on it yeah and get a good connection on it you'll see it okay so there you are it's 15.97 volts yeah about 16 volts on this one so that is the voltage on this one yeah and you can do this uh, on really any power supply that has this type of problem so really that's all there is to say about that uh, there's the hidden voltage yeah if you didn't know about it now you do and um, I hope that helps you uh, to tackle some more repairs where you've got 5 volt standby but the power supply won't start and you're thinking what shall I check next it's that one yeah okay guys see you soon on another video now ciao